guys, this is Dennis and I've got a very special video for you today. In this video, we will be going over tomorrow's ECB meeting. Now, this is a very important ECB meeting and that's why I'm going to be bringing in Alex, who is a Pips Matter instructor, to help me with the fundamental side. So, what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be covering the ECB meeting tomorrow. I'm going to be using some information that Alex already provided to our team to explain to you the biggest problems the ECB is facing right now. Then I'm going to go into a bit of questions and answers with Alex. And what we're going to do is end on the technical side where we're going to analyze one or two euro currency pairs um, and the DAX, of course. So. The biggest problems the ECB is facing right now, and I'm going to name three of them, that's inflation. And this is Alex's data, and we're going to be speaking about this pretty soon. So, inflation. The ECB has a strong concerns about hitting its 2% inflation target. They've said this continuous times through multiple meetings so far. Core inflation is only at 1.2%, and it's proving to be a headache to the ECB. A strong euro. Now, Alex is going to explain this better than me, but I'm going to just give it to you uh, in, in, in short words. Now, a stronger euro is putting a dent on inflation, which, which just can't seem to raise uh, above it. So, or, well, basically, inflation can't rise. Um, the stronger euro is putting pressure on inflation rising, which is putting a question mark on the policies the ECB is doing so far. And finally, we also have geopolitical unrest or risks. It's no surprise that in the Eurozone, we have plenty of unrest. From the migrant crisis to Brexit, the ECB has plenty of headaches. Of course, there are much more than inflation and, and you know, the migrant crisis and Brexit. There is so much more in ECB's plate. But um, generally, inflation, a stronger euro and ge geopolitical risks are the main problems the ECB is facing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Alex to this conversation right now. Hey, Alex, can you hear me? Oh, hi, Dennis. How are you doing? I'm very good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Great. Thanks for taking time out of your day. I know you're busy with analyzing uh, the markets for tomorrow and even for today. You and Yako found that excellent trade on NZD USD, which I already have 19.8 pips on it. How's that doing for you? How is that trade doing? Uh, going yeah. For you? Oh, it's going very well. Perfect. Very good. Okay, so um, I told you that I'll ask you a couple of questions. I brought you here with me to go over the basics of what's happening with um, with uh, tomorrow's ECB meeting. Now, why do you believe the euro is at a two-year, a two-and-a-half-year high versus the US dollar? Well, it's to do with quantitative easing. The ECB is expected to end or decrease the quantitative easing by December. Right, yes. Yes, and I, I believe that right, the traders are kind of... Well, quantitative and easing is, is a pretty interesting subject of its own. Um, mainly, it's a recovery mode from a recession. And if the ECB is to end QE, well, I guess you're right, then people are buying euros because they think that the European economy is better. Uh, how about the biggest the biggest problem you see with uh, a stronger currency? What do you think is the biggest problem uh, uh, a central bank faces with a stronger currency? Well, it puts pressure on inflation. We've seen the opposite effect in the U UK with the Brexit announcement. Yes. The, the GDP weakened heavily. That's, that's and this resulted in inflation heading, yeah, heading way above the Bank of England target. That's correct. That's that's a very good example you're using. Um, so you guys have a problem with inflation, right? You have too much inflation right now. Yes, far too yeah. much. Yeah. So you guys have too much inflation. The eurozone doesn't have inflation, and if we correlate inflation to the currency, looking at the GBP weakening. So if we draw a line downwards, we'll see the inflation being one. And if we push inflation down, it's basically like a scale. If you put pressure on one side, the other side rises. Um, so the, the GBP weakened, but inflation went very high. And here we have a different problem where the currency is strengthening, but inflation is going down. And uh, that's 
definitely going to be a very big headache and it's going to be interesting to see what the ECB will be doing tomorrow. Um, do you have any anything else to add before we go into the into the charts? Yes, well, I think uh, Draghi is going to uh, weaken the euro because I think having the strong um, euro will make the monetary policy complicated. So I think he will make some dovish statements during the meeting to so, um, uh, reduce the strength of the euro. Okay, cool. So you think that basically, if I, if I were to ask you a question like, what are you going to be doing tomorrow with Euro USD? Are you going to be buying or selling? Based on the information you have I, right now, what are you going to be doing? I will be shorting. I'll be taking a sell position. Very good. Thanks for helping us out with the, with that. Do you have anything else? Um, well, I, there's, I have a bit about um, the current rates okay, um, hitting its 2% inflation, which you mentioned, and the August inflation uh, grew by analyzed rate of 1.5. The core inflation is only at 1.2. Yeah. So they have real problems with the, the inflation, as you mentioned earlier. Well, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a big a big problem. But uh, th that inflation problem is, isn't the only issue. I mean, if we look at if we look at the stronger currency, that means your exports are weaker. Now, Germany being the main exporter of the eurozone, mainly cars and. and hardware, um, their exports will fall. If the euro continues to rise, exports in the eurozone will, will basically drop. And if the GBP continues to be weak, people will simply just start buying British cars rather than, than German cars uh, or American cars. I mean, the dollar is going to be weak. So yeah, uh, exports are dropping, inflation can't go up. And I think that's a real headache for the eurozone right now. A stronger currency is not good especially with the with december being what two two three months away i mean it's right around yes. the corner and um, if the ecb doesn't basically doesn't cut uh qe which they promised they would in december i think that's going to cause chaos for the euro i mean it's going to weaken drastically maybe they'll say we'll have to delay it on a month-to-month -month basis so that's going to weaken the euro but then they're going to strengthen it after once they mainly basically achieve contracts or sign contracts for exports and of course once inflation goes a little higher um, what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to go over to the charts and we can analyze them together okay so here we are we are looking at euro usd's four hour chart you can see a bunch of uh, drawings here already and some specific information like the spin bar here and sell position the trend line support all of this was released in that video we released, I think, a couple of days ago where we were waiting to short the euro. Now you can see I still have a pending order here, and the pending order is at 1.18563, right under the trend line, which we expect to be broken on Thursday. Now the two pairs, the two forex pairs I'm going to be speaking about today is Euro USD and Euro GBP. Uh, let's go over the weekly chart of Euro. Here it is. We have a strong reversal candle right here. So last week and the before last week, you can see a strong, strong push upwards. Uh, then a new high price closes in the red at this key resistance level of 1.2070. You can see this red line here as well being a support in recent times, a couple of years ago, 2011, 10. <laughs> so that's quite far away actually. Um, anyway, we are waiting for a vicious reversal back down towards the support of 1.14. I think that's a logical area to target. It's not too far away from current price. It's it's what 460 pips. So Euro USD giving us bearish signals. The last two weekly candles giving us bearish signals. The four-hour chart move, playing around a little bit, but if this trend line that's was created or started being created in July, first early July, uh, right until now. If it's broken, then that's clear reversal of a short term trend and prices should go lower. That's why we have a pending order here. You can see that my stop loss is 72 pips, my take profit is 388. Moving over to Euro GBP, Euro GBP as well at a key resistance of, at 0 0.92790. 
same pattern reversal candle so green and then new high and then red and now we're going lower now we released this trade idea a couple of days ago i currently have 32.8 pips in profit at the time of speaking of this video or recording of this video so the trade's going really well and my target area is down here right there that's 0 0.87790 alex are you still with me Yes, I am, Dennis. Okay. Do you have any Euro trades or are you waiting for tomorrow? Well, no. Currently, I just have an NZ, NZD USD trade. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to go over DAX very quickly and we're going to end this very brief uh, video. So, you can see the DAX has been trending lower. This is a daily chart. And we can clearly put the trend line right there on top and one at the bottom of the daily charts and you can see that price action is trending lower the 30 day the white little line here the 30 day uh, ema is holding well the middle dc 30 day as well is holding well uh, a further confirmation with this red candle here that price action could go lower now we could break out to the upside of course if the euro begins to weaken maybe that will have a different effect on, on the DAX. We just don't know how it will react tomorrow, depending on what kind of information will be provided. But even the weekly chart, the weekly chart currently is showing us bearish movement. Is this the beginning of a, of a, stronger, uh, of a stronger crash in the Euro and the DAX? I'm not sure. But based on current price action on the DAX, what we could see is DAX going down to 11300 based on current price action. Tomorrow's fundamental news could seriously affect this, but I will remain bearish on the DAX just because the EMA is broken. We have a downward trend line. Uh, we are 114 weeks from the previous stop. Lots of reasons to sell the DAX, lots of reasons to sell the Euro. Tomorrow's meeting, as Alex said, could be bearish. Alex, I'm going to end this video. Thank you for helping me with this. We'll definitely do a recap or basically a summary of tomorrow's meeting if you're free after the ECB meeting. Would that be good for you? Yes, of course. Cool. We'll do a nice summary for everyone. and We'll basically show them what we've traded, how our trades are doing, uh, and of course to see if our first video was a success or not. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'll, see you in, I'll see you in the same video tomorrow. Great. Okay. Take care, Alex. Thank you, everyone, for watching. You too, Dennis. Yeah, we wish you guys all the best, and we'll see you in the markets. Bye now.